Sometimes we get caught up in all the complexities and we want to know what the next cool thing is or the really complex stuff is. But at the end of the day, sometimes it's best to revisit the fundamentals. I had a great question from a client that came into lab the other day who's getting interested in using power from a cycling perspective to measure and monitor his training. And he asked the simple question of what is a watt? So today we're going to go through the basics of wattage and how it's actually useful for cycling, but then also running as well. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Nick here talking science of endurance and everything sports science in general. Thanks to everyone who has been subscribing to the channel. Absolutely love the support you have been giving me uh, for these videos and what we're doing on the channel here. Very, very, very close to 3,000 subscribers. So make sure, please consider hitting that big red button down below. Keep supporting this great channel. Let's keep growing this great community we've got. And head over to Instagram as well, at NJ underscore sports science. I'll put it in the bottom corner here. Check out all the great content over on Instagram. Some different things uh, to what you see on YouTube here. A bit more of my day-to-day -day and what's going on with my own training. But if you are interested, head over there and check out some of that great content also. As I mentioned in the introduction, sometimes it's best to go back and revisit the basics. And that's exactly what I had to do with a client the other day in the lab who's getting interested in using wattage, thinking about buying a power meter for his bike, and just ask the simple question of what is a watt? What am I measuring and why is everyone banging on about wattage? So today I'm gonna to quickly cover off the basics of wattage and what we're actually talking about. So really simply, watts or wattage is just a measure of what we call power. We're trying to understand what, what are we outputting here? And power overall is a very simple equation. It's made up of two key components. It's made up of force production. So from a cycling perspective, this is how hard you're pushing the pedals. Not how quickly, just how hard. If you put it in a really heavy gear, you, get, you have to require a lot of force. Your muscles have to do a lot of work. You feel like you have to push the pedals really hard to get that gear going. If you put it in really light gear, you don't have to produce as much force. This is then multiplied. So how hard we're turning the pedals is then multiplied by the velocity. In other words, how quickly are we turning those pedals, which from a cycling perspective, we mainly are gonna know that as cadence or your RPMs. If we're talking about our power in the context of running, this is how hard you're impacting the ground is the force component. So when I impact, how, how much force am I generating or impacting the ground with, multiply by again, our running cadence, how quickly am I turning the legs over? So what we're looking at here is the relationship between how hard and how fast. Those multiplied together gives us watts. Watts is therefore gonna give us a really consistent output of what is the, I guess, physiological amount of work. So it's really important to understand that watts or using wattage is independent of things like speed. It's independent of overcoming resistance. The example I give here on the bike is, if I'm interested at looking at a particular physical physiological output, let's say for example, we're going and doing um, some threshold based intervals and I wanna sit at 100% of my client or the athlete's threshold. That might be, let's say 240 watts, I'll pull a random number. That might be 240 watts if we've lab tested them, we know where we're at. I know that that is a, a particular amount of physiological work. I know what the, out, the output is, I know exactly what stimulus that is gonna generate on the body. I can get them to go and ride at 240 watts on the flat out on a velodrome. I could get them to do that on their trainer at home. I could get them to do that out on a flat surface out in the road. Each of these I know, regardless of how that athlete does that training session, we're gonna get the same amount of physiological work and therefore the same stimulus in the training session. If we were to go off speed, for example, and say I told an athlete, I want you to ride at say 36 kilometers per hour in your threshold based intervals. Well, that could vary greatly depending on the type of resistances we're facing. On a trainer where we're estimating speed, sure, we might get that 240 watts that we were looking for. Great, we, we lucked out there, we got, uh, got very lucky. If I get that athlete to go out in a velodrome, well, there's gonna be a headwind up one direction, a tailwind on the other. If it's an outdoor velodrome in particular, we might have some crosswinds going on. Might be hard to maintain that speed. So we might actually have some fluctuations in power for punching into more resistance. So a headwind, power's gonna to have to go up. If we're working with a tailwind, power's gonna drop. Same for if we're out in the road. If you're working into the breeze, crosswinds, etc. If you're trying to get a very specific physiological output, Speed isn't just isn't gonna cut it because there are so many complexities to it that we're now adding in, all those external resistances. Power, however, is gonna keep you on that same physiological output. The body internally is working just as hard to produce it. The external output might be different, and this is where we see that speed difference on race day. You might be able to put out 300 watts in a sprint distance triathlon or a time trial. 
but it was a particularly windy day. So your time, your, your time or your split time might actually have been a little bit slower than normal. Vice versa, you might have had perfect conditions and you're absolutely flying. So important to consider wattage is just the product of power or really is power, which is the product of force multiplied by the velocity. So how hard we're turning the pedals multiplied by how quickly we turn the pedals. And it's a really easy way of getting a nice consistent physiological output so we know exactly how much work we are completing in a particular session. I'm gonna leave it there, keep it nice and simple. Any questions you have about wattage, calculating power, the types of power meters you have, interested to know your thoughts down below, as always, please leave them in the comments. Otherwise, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Keep boosting us up, this great community we've got building. Keep your questions coming in, the topic ideas for videos. Got a whole bunch I'm gonna be working on over the next little while coming from questions from uh, people commenting on previous videos or getting in touch with me via Instagram as well. So I'm going to leave it there today. Hopefully you got a bit out of it. Nice, short, sharp one. And we'll see you in the next video.